I am Frederick L. Milliken, Executive Director of Phoenix Masonry. And I am Elena Llamas, Director of Public Relations for Phoenix Masonry. And today we are going to talk about Freemasonry and the revolution in Latin America. There were a number of Freemasons involved in the American War of Independence and the French Revolution. Prominent men such as George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Lafayette, and Jean Paul Marat. The revolution that emerged in Latin America also involved a number of leading men who were Freemasons or were connected to Freemasonry. Revolutionaries such as Simón Bolívar, José de San Martín, Bernardo O'Higgins, and Francisco de Miranda. The complicated nexus that interlinks these men and their ideals certainly intertwines with the growth of the Enlightenment of the period and indeed with Freemasonry, as is the shadowy links to Britain that some of these men had at the time. Francisco de Miranda. Francisco de Miranda was a military commander, revolutionary, and Freemason. He was born in Venezuela in 1750, and after leaving for Spain, he paid for a commission in the Spanish army and fought for a number of campaigns. He became involved in the American War of Independence and the French Revolution and met such luminaries of the Enlightenment as George Washington, Thomas Paine, and Lafayette, before leading expeditions to invade Venezuela in an attempt to overthrow the Spanish royalist government. Miranda had developed the idea of an independent Latin America that stretched from the Mississippi River in the north to Cape Horn in the south, and he was to become a figurehead in the quest for revolution in the Spanish-American colonies. In 1806, Miranda managed to obtain informal British help for his expedition, though it ended in failure. Miranda escaped to the British Caribbean before making his way to Britain, where he endeavored to gain further support. A year earlier, he had sought assistance from Thomas Jefferson and James Madison but they had kept their distance from the scheme. After the failure of the first expedition, another expedition was to be assembled in 1808, headed by none other than erstwhile Freemason Arthur Wellesley, later to be the Duke of Wellington. But Napoleon's invasion of Spain put a stop to the venture. It was to be two years later when, after Napoleon took the Spanish crown, that a junta took control of Caracas, and Miranda was invited to join the new government by Simon Bolivia while he was seeking support on a diplomatic visit to Britain. Miranda was persuaded by his fellow Freemason, but the decision was to be a fatal one. Miranda took the role of leading the Republic's forces, but by 1812, the Spanish royalist forces had gained the upper hand, and Miranda, believing the situation to be hopeless, tried to escape on a British ship. He was captured by Bolivar and some fellow revolutionary officers and was turned over to the Spanish forces, where he was imprisoned, dying in jail in 1816. José de San Martín. José de San Martín was an Argentinian military commander, revolutionary, and Freemason. Although his Masonic membership hinges somewhat on his link to the Lodge of the Rational Knights, otherwise known as the Lautaro Lodge. This lodge was more of a collection of like-minded men who wished to promote the ideals of the Spanish Enlightenment, ideals of liberty and equality under the guise of a Masonic gathering. San Martín had fought in the Peninsular War against France, and was influenced by the ideas of the Spanish Enlightenment, while staying in Cadiz, where he may have been introduced to the Lodge of Rational Knights. After retiring from the army and settling in London for a while, he resided at the same house where Freemason Francisco de Miranda had lodged in Grafton Street a number of years before. San Martin then set sail for Argentina in January 1812 on a frigate called George Canning, named after the Freemason, with Carlos Maria de Alvear and Matias Sapiola, 
to other members of the lodge. And on arriving in Buenos Aires, the three of them formed a new lodge and promoted the ideals of and assisted in spreading the ideas of independence from Spain. San Martin became the colonel of the Revolutionary Army during a long war with the Royalists. He commanded the Army of the North in Upper Peru, the Army of the Andes, which allied San Martin with fellow Freemason Bernardo O'Higgins, who became the leader of Chile. And San Martin became the protector of Peru after declaring its independence in 1821. He met with fellow Freemason and revolutionary Simon Bolivar at the Guayaquil Conference on the 26th of July, 1822. And there was an intention to join forces and defeat the remnants of the Royalist forces in Peru. However, after the conference, Bolivar and San Martin did not join forces, and San Martin resigned as protector of Peru, going on to leave South America, living the rest of his life in exile in Europe. He died in 1850, his body eventually being repatriated and finally being laid to rest in Buenos Aires Metropolitan Cathedral in 1880. Though, as he was suspected of being a Freemason, his mausoleum was situated in an extended wing of the cathedral. Simón Bolívar. Simón Bolívar was a Venezuelan military and political leader and a Freemason. Bolivar came from an aristocratic Creole family, and after his wife died, he ventured to Europe, where he became a Freemason in Cadiz in Spain. His visits shaping his ideas on liberty and on politics. He admired the British politician and Freemason George Canning, and also admired the romantic poet Lord Byron, who also became involved in revolutionary activities in Greece and had been involved in the quasi-Masonic Carbonari. It was on his return to Venezuela that his political and military ideas could be put to use. After Napoleon had taken the Spanish crown, Caracas and Venezuela formed a junta in 1810, and Bolivar was among those chosen to travel to London on a diplomatic mission to gain recognition and support. While in London, Bolivar met with Arthur Wellesley and approached the exiled Miranda to become directly involved in the new Venezuelan junta. On arriving back to Venezuela, independence was declared and Miranda, after an introduction by Bolivar, was placed in command of the New Republic's army. Despite being a Mason, it did not stop Bolivar from arresting fellow Freemason Miranda as a traitor to the Republic in 1812, after suspecting him of fleeing from the Spanish Royalist forces, passing him on to the Spanish Royalists, who then shipped to Spain to languish in a prison until his death a few years later. Bolívar went on to become a leading commander of the Republican Army, being aided by British soldiers fresh from the Napoleonic Wars. He fought tirelessly in Venezuela, helping to restore the Venezuelan Republic twice, both of which he served as president, and in Peru, where he also became president, and a new country was founded in his honor called Bolivia. He said to have founded a lodge in Peru in 1824 and to have become a Scottish Rite Mason. His vision was to found Gran Colombia, a collection of states that included Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Panama, Northern Peru, Western Guyana, and Northwestern Brazil. This vision collapsed after his death in 1830 of tuberculosis, but Bolivar would always be known as El Libertador, the Liberator. Bernardo O'Higgins. Bernardo O'Higgins, as the name suggests, was of both Spanish and Irish descent. He was the illegitimate, illegitimate son of Ambrosio O'Higgins, a Spanish officer and adventurer born in Ireland. Bernardo O'Higgins was born in Chile, and though he never met his illustrious father, Ambrosio paid for his education, and he was eventually sent to England to complete this education. It was while he was in London that he met Francisco de Miranda, joining a lodge that had been established by Miranda and became introduced to ideas about American independence. Miranda's lodge in London seemed to be similar 
to the La Toro Lodge, a collection of men with similar ideas, influenced by the Enlightenment and promoting the vision of an independent Latin America. O'Higgins returned to Chile in 1802 with these ideas, and in 1810, he took a role in acting against the French dominated Spanish government, where a junta was formed in Chile. He had some military training and proved himself in a battle against the Spanish royalists, rising to become colonel. But as the Republicans were divided with differing ideas on the future of independence, the Spanish royalists made gains and O'Higgins escaped to Argentina. It was in Argentina that he met fellow Freemason Jose de San Martin, who shared a similar political vision to O'Higgins, and together they went to Chile to defeat the Spanish royalists in 1817, with Chile declaring itself as an independent republic in 1818. O'Higgins became the Supreme Director of Chile in 1817, a position he held until he was de deposed in a coup in 1823. After being deposed, O'Higgins went to Peru, where he met with another Freemason, Simon Bolivar, and offered support to fight the remaining royalist forces there. He was to stay exiled in Peru until his death in 1842. His remains were finally returned to Chile in 1869. For men such as these that sought liberty and equality, Masonic and political visions merged to form a revolutionary idealism. The type of Freemasonry that the Latoro Lodge practiced and promoted was certainly of a more political flavor, creating an outlet for like-minded men such as Miranda to examine the Enlightenment and to help from a vision for their ideas on a united independent Latin America. These ideas changed South America, creating new countries such as Bolivia and changing the political structure of Latin American forever. The above article by David Harrison was previously published on The Square, November 2016, copyright Dr. David Harrison, 2016.